Question, is this a new Bronco or an old one? Well, technically it's both. This is the Gateway Bronco, a Bronco reproduction that's been officially licensed by Ford. They're built to order in the Midwest, so Andre and I had a Skype interview with Gateway Bronco's CEO and founder, Seth Burgett, to learn more about how this company makes brand new first generation Broncos. Plus, Seth was also able to give us some information about the potential for a new Bronco Raptor from Ford in the near future. But you'll have to stick around to the end of this video for that information. What kind of products do you offer? Uh, do you recondition some or, and now you've licensed to be able to reproduce it, right? So we really have kind of three configurations and you can get any one of our models in any one of these three configurations. So let's just say that um, you would like a brand new Bronco built today, all brand new metal. We build it for you. Okay. And then you select which model you want, right? You got your Coyote Edition, you've got your modern day Warrior, which are both Coyote powered trucks. And then we've got a new truck coming. It will be launched in January and it'll have a base price of $250,000 and a new model coming. So special news coming. Okay. We'll talk about that in January, but we ought to talk again then because it'll be a pretty special offering. Yeah, no kidding. That's, that's awesome. But to answer your question, Andre, uh, we'll take a new Bronco built from scratch or an old Bronco frame and a new body, or if you've got Grandpa's old Bronco, Gramp 69 is one of the Broncos out there, and we'll build you Grandpa's Bronco and keep it all original and bring it back to you just the way Grandpa bought it when it was brand new. When you're building a new Bronco from the ground up from scratch, where do all those different parts come from? Where do you guys get the frame? Where do you get the body work? And how do you put it all together? Yeah, so uh, number one, the frame comes from the US, uh, all manufactured in the United States. Uh, the sheet metal components we buy from a distributor, Wild Horse 4x4, and then we take all the individual parts, we bring them in, and we build those in our factory to our factory specifications on top of that frame. So in the end, it's custom built to our dimensions based on all those trucks that we've had or still have that are original paint, original markings from the factory that are untouched, and we can build to those specifications in our factory. Where are you based? Where's the assembly line? Yeah, we're out of the St. Louis area, Andre. Okay. So we're in the uh, St. Louis market, about 30 minutes from downtown. We're on the Illinois side of the river on Route 66 in a small town called Hamill, Illinois. So did you guys do a lot of like computer uh, generated images, a lot of measuring and, and special design to make sure that your final product really closely matched what a Bronco coming off the factory line in the late 60s or early 70s looked like? Um, I'll answer this in part. We, um, we found that there were a number of design flaws on the Bronco, that if you build it just the way the original Bronco was built, right. the tailgate will rub on one side. Every time, always, that's why the tailgate on a Bronco will rust out on any Bronco that's ever been weathered. So we fix those things, uh, Mike. What we do is we go in and we saw what these kind of design flaws were, or maybe it was a tooling flaw that came in and just always stayed that way for the Bronco. We fix those things, and we don't necessarily use computer-aided tools for some of those items, but we take the dimensions off of our kind of um, untouched virgin vehicles, and we apply that to what we do when we build ours. We have a number of proprietary and potentially patent pending items. Gotcha, so the idea though is that it comes off the line better than an original factory Bronco would have. Right, well you have, you have five decades of progress <laughs> yeah, exactly. on your side, right? <laughs> right, right? Here, I just talked to a gentleman uh, yesterday and he's from Michigan and he said, um, you know, we had Broncos back in the day, and he said, we all knew if you bought one that was built on a Monday or a Friday, <laughs> it was going to be a piece of junk. You know? It happens. <laughs> it, it happens. Just, it was the way it worked. Yeah. And so what we've done is we really tried to eliminate all those variations, make sure all the door gaps are beautiful, uh, make sure all the body lines match up, and then by doing that, you end up getting a Bronco that would be potentially better than it ever would have been in 66 through 77 uh, by design or by the tolerances that they used in production at the time. Are you taking crate motors then, like the Coyote motor, for example? 
Oh yeah. And uh, yeah. What, what's the transmission? What is that like? What, what's the what's the vehicle like? Yeah. So the vehicle is essentially our goal is to create the Ford Raptor in a Bronco body. Okay. Wow. Okay. So what you've got is we use the Coyote five liter engine and we back it up with the Raptor six speed automatic from the 6.2 liter Raptor. Okay. Right. The great truck. I own the truck. I redline it every day. I drive it. And uh, I love that truck. Okay. And so we are essentially trying to build a vehicle that goes zero to 60 quicker than the Ford Raptor. Yeah, the next challenge, though, is the Ford Raptor is a huge vehicle. But it stops incredibly well. So we got it to stop quicker than a Ford Raptor. And then it's getting the handling as close to a Ford Raptor as you can, knowing that you've got a lot shorter wheelbase and maybe a higher center of gravity. So that your performance benchmark was the first generation Ford Raptor? Yes, sir. What about like suspensions, like solid axles? Shocks, you know, what are you looking at there? We give a couple of tiers of options there, Andre. We've got um, the the baseline option is very, very good. And so considering a baseline is kind of a, a tough thing to say, but it is a Bilstein suspension, uh, Dana 44 front, uh, nine inch rear and uh, sway bars front, sway bars back. We get the geometry all right. That's what our base suspension is. But then we also go up to a four link suspension, uh, all built brand new in the US. And that four link suspension is a new frame rail, new everything, TIG welded. And that would be, um, again, a solid axle but then the next stage is going <laughs> with the independent. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about cost, right? Because I think that's what a lot of people want to know is how much is a Gateway Bronco going to cost them if they want to go and order one? So can you lay out your sort of base pricing scheme and then talk about you know where you can go from there? Yeah, absolutely. Through the end of the year, we have $120,000 base price, $150,000 for the Coyote, and $180,000 for the modern day Warrior. Well, everything is going to shift at the beginning of the year or launching at Scottsdale in Barrett Jackson, where we'll have $150,000 uh, Coyote powered Bronco, $180,000 uh, modern day warrior, and then a $250,000 Bronco that's the product yet to be announced and uh, quite special. The modern day warrior to me is really kind of the ultimate uh, Bronco where it's using the original frame and suspension but modernized the way we modernize it. And then the interior is quieted down drastically. Okay. Proprietary noise and vibration isolation. It has Porsche leather standard. It has Bentley leather or uh, American Bison leather as a standard. Mm -hmm. And it's a luxurious interior, but it's a rugged luxury. It's something that's um, unique. It has barn wood in the back. So you've got barn wood bed, uh, premium stereo, air conditioning, everything that most people would select off as all the options is basically standard in the modern day warrior. So you don't have an inventory. This is a customer would uh, contact you and build on a case-by-case -case basis? Is that how it works? Yes, we keep an inventory of donor trucks, Andre. Okay. Uh, but we basically, someone places an order and we either use one of our donor trucks that are already in inventory or we go buy one uh, or a frame and a title and then we build it. So we call it drama-free building. You basically decide what you want, pick out all your colors, uh, send the deposit, we start building it, we then paint and body, finish paint and body, send you pictures and video, make a progress payment, and then we deliver it at the end and, and you make final payment. One of the most unique things that Gateway offers compared to some of its competitors is the Ford certification for, you know, the, the reproduction, the, the reproduction uh, and also uh, the, the refurbishments, right? So can you talk to us about how you guys were able to get your products licensed by Ford? You know, there are two, sec two sections of this. Uh, one is the refurbishment, which you talked about, and that is us meeting the certified uh, standards for Ford to be able to refurbish these vehicles. And that's a really important thing. There are no standards in the industry. Uh, these are the only standards there are for refurbishing a vehicle uh, that I know of, and we meet those standards for Ford. 
The second thing would be uh, providing a vehicle that is brand new, a reproduction of a 66 to 77 Bronco. And that's the second part of the license that allows us to do that, building you a brand new 2018 or very soon 2019 Bronco of a 66 to 77 design. Uh, and those are the two kind of forms of the license. How does the aftermarket part selection for classic Broncos interact with your trucks? I mean, I feel like most people would just order them how they want them straight from you guys anyways, but is it still pretty easy to just bolt on aftermarket parts if someone decides they want to change something later on down the road? Um, usually when someone wants to do something to their vehicle that's major, uh, they'll then send it to us and we take care of it. And now we have all of our vehicles serviced out in the field. So if you live in uh, you know, Canada, Toronto, wherever you live, we take care of your Bronco there. But if you want something done to it, like a hard top put on or air conditioning added or something added afterwards, uh, usually it gets shipped back, we do the work here, and then we deliver it back to the customer. So Ford is working on a Bronco right, themselves. The next generation, right? The brand new Bronco. Can you tell us, uh, you know, well, a little what do you bit, think about this? Yeah, what are your thoughts on the on the new Bronco coming up? That's a, uh, you know, potentially one of the most exciting product launches Ford has had in the past 25 years. So, from my understanding, they are putting a lot of attention to make this new Ford Bronco exactly what customers want. Uh, there are a lot of customers that want a lot of things. They want this to be as good as the original and uh, of course a whole lot better in many ways. And so um, I would say that the people involved seem to be putting all of the right attention to the Bronco. Uh, some of the controversy might be that I've heard pretty significant rumors that it could be a four door uh, to compete against the Jeep products. Mm -hmm. um, and if they do, you know, there'll be some people that are disappointed. We still make a two door Bronco. We still love the two door Bronco. Uh, but the history has shown that two-door SUVs have all died out over time, every one of them. Right. Uh, the Jimmy, the Blazers, every single one has is, is really not lasted the test of time. So I would assume that you know, the current CEO of Ford is a very, very smart individual. Uh, he's a very intelligent man, very analytical man, and he studied this whole thing and made a decision to go towards trucks because that's where the market is. Mm -hmm. And so if they do make a four-door Bronco, it's because that's where the market is. For example, the Ranger Raptor is available overseas or will be available very shortly. Yeah. So we know, you know, we know Ford is expanding that nameplate. The, and the, the, the Raptor the, brand is expanding. The Raptor brand and yeah. obviously we have the Raptor here in the United States, the F-150 Raptor. Um, so is it, do, you, do you think they're kind of going that way, expanding that brand maybe? So it's pretty clear that this is happening. Uh, the new Bronco is coming. They're doing the, uh, the work at the factory level to get the tooling right, to get things prepared, the new mm -hmm. Ranger, et cetera. And so, um, you know, we're seeing that there's pretty good indications that the new Bronco will be a Raptor version. If they really take the Ford Raptor suspension, and they make this work under the Bronco, every four wheel drive nut or enthusiast right. will have something to look forward to, you know? Yeah. There'll be more test drives at a Ford dealer of the new Ford Bronco just because it has the Raptor suspension. So the franchise of Raptor has been immensely popular. And as you guys know, the, the Raptor truck deserves all the kind of accolades it gets. If they transfer that knowledge and technology to the Ranger, and some early tests have been done with that, if they transfer that to the Bronco, I think it'll be a raging success. Well, you're playing in a different market, so when the new Bronco comes, are you worried that it's going to affect Gateway Bronco somehow, or is it yeah. just going to be better and better? Or do you think it's going to help? No, we're not concerned at all about it. It's only going to support and build our market. If you think about it, um, the, the, the new Bronco will be the Millennials Bronco. They're going to be the, the four-door Jeep family, Jeep owner uh, that transitions to a Bronco. And we build a Bronco for the Millennials parent. Well, there's everything you need to know about the Gateway Bronco, plus a little insider information about the Bronco Raptor. 
We hope you guys liked this interview. Please be sure to tell us what you think about the Gateway Bronco and whether or not you're going to try and save up to buy one. Stay tuned to TFLcar.com for the latest news, views, and real-world reviews, and hopefully more videos about the Gateway Bronco in the near future. Thanks for watching.